today we have with us Colonel Surajit Bose, the Director of Academics and International Collaborations at United United World Institute of Design, Karnavati University, Gandhi Nagar. Welcome to the College Dunya Portal, sir. Morning, uh, welcome, and thank you very much for having me on your uh, website and portal. And let's see how we move forward in understanding the great value that design education and education, higher education as a whole is so much part of nation building in India. Sure, sir. Our pleasure. So, sir, beginning with the interview, my first question to you is that uh, you have held several key positions at educational institutes throughout a professional career. What are the key factors that keep you connected to the education sector? So, uh, the major part is to understand that how much education gives and is part of nation building. Today, as a nation which is willing to fly and go higher into all the rating charts of the world to be really considered as a global soft power, we have a epsimal graduation ratio, GER of 26%. And the benchmark is that 40% is where a developing country starts looking at that. So there's a huge plan which is required to be enforced. Thankfully, we have now so much dynamic and so many forces have joined together, whether it's the government of India, whether there is the private players, whether it's under the UGC in bringing design and education to a new front. So uh, I'll be speaking a little bit more about design higher education because that's the education not many are so much aware of. We are aware of sciences, we are aware of medicine, we are aware of engineering accountancy and maybe law but design education is new it started in 1958-59 when Charles and Ray Eames was commissioned by our first prime minister to set up the Indian education in design so world over design education is nearly about 100 to 150 years old with the starting of National Institute of Design and followed by NIF and followed by a few key players uh, we have now brought design to the forefront. So it is so motivational to be part of this huge journey of it. It is so much of innovation. See the way EdTech is getting funded and most of it is towards bringing a new playground, a new ecosystem of education in India. The last nine months have been some sort of a great learning and healing process where you could see that the vast expanse of technology, which keep pace of bringing our students through the online, through the blended process into a So these are all factors. So A, one has to update themselves on technology. B is that there's so much innovation and so much play which is required. C is that the variety. And most and most important is the all, is that how you are developing a new cadre of faculty who can take on in imparting such a great education through various means, through good infrastructure, good processes, benchmarking your processes to bringing design education at par with nearly global players. So at Karnavati University and at UID, we are very proud that our curriculum, our descriptors, our systems and processes are benchmarked to the best in the world and we have various quality and standard processes intervening so that we know that our ed education can deliver and make what we call students industry ready on all fronts to take on the challenges of two. Absolutely. Very well said, sir. Thank you so much for your response. Moving on, I would like to know more, a little more about you. So, what is your philosophy of leadership and how would you like to describe your leadership style? See, the leadership and understanding. First, you have to be keen follower and understand what leadership is and what it demands of When we were in the military or in the organized armed forces, there was a certain sort of leadership where we read the great leadership of people who have been part of the various wars, how they conducted themselves, how nations brought themselves together to look at certain areas where they would think that they were right in doing that. 
and those leadership traits through individual traits were seen but when it comes to design education it is our education sector it is what we call a very collegiate way of function you have to be collaborative in nature you have to be democratic in understanding and it is a more coaching mentoring style which gradually seeps down from management to the educators that is the faculty at large and the supporting faculty and teaching and non teaching faculty including the technicians which we have in all our studios workshops and through a coaching mentoring process that is the type of leadership and why do we do that because it is through them and change making mindset changes making it making education so collaborative where students are as much part of changes and when we look at curricula in a design school we have to predict the future at least 4 5 years because the student in a 4 year or a 2 year pg has to be part of the industry so it takes lots of learning understanding and one of the best things is when we send our faculty for internships to the industry when we have great global thought leaders into the classroom through master classes or through various summits conclaves conferences we include and your networking so these are some of the areas where the leadership style starts forming collegiate mentoring coaching and a very democratic way or an inclusive way of dealing with it. right sir so on that note my next question to you is that how do you strategize about the key programs and uh, plans for the marketing and administration of uh, united world institute of design and karnavati university as a whole so when we talk about an institution we talk about institution building and three factors stand out in a uh, institutions how it is seen for seen by the people or the students or the prospective students a is you need to have good accreditation and credential in today's world no one can fool anyone so you have to have a valid degree granting status as a university you have to have valid programs which make a sense you have to have good infrastructure in a 40 acre campus with so many studios i think we are one of the universities whose infrastructure is to be proud of from leather to jewelry to ceramics to labs 3d printing uh, ar vr mxr labs to robotic lab to the standard fashion textile weaving uh, sort of what is called the technical aspects so we have labs of also and since design education is so experiential it is so trans and multidisciplinary so you have to have all these so that's the second part and third is a great international connect and what we call international program when we have all these we need to project it in some form or the other through various outreach program and the industry academia connect which is so important so if you see we have mandated some processes and systems a that is certain number of international faculty through in campus or through various classes certain number of national ceos thought leaders international experts etc national experts and through a process of curriculum which is very well system of process now we have organized or two our outreach program for students to visit our campus because as this is seeing is believing the students who are prospective in this they come and visit campus through a campus uh, immersion program our faculty move out to metros to students our outreach reaches out to most cities towns across india including neighboring countries and we have what is called many every year two international global conferences this year unfortunately or fortunately is going to be in a virtual medium where people talk about the future of education the transformational changes which are happening in the area of work that's another great area then there are something on responsibility of designers towards society 
societal changes so uh, education is touches not only the core areas to make them industry relevant it also touches the areas which need to be the future of how as educators we need to be responsible to society at large so these are then transferred translated to four or five outreach processes which are again benchmarked so so that a student of class 8 9 10 11 11 can understand the value and then be prepared that this is another area which is actually going up at a cagr of nearly 20% when india started there were just three or four design colleges by 200 and 2018 there are about 70 and by now there are about 90 design colleges so that's the area of growth but we have something called the outreach where even people are educated on the type of exam so we have a three exam process is a design aptitude test followed by studio test creative test in class and a portfolio evaluation so students are taught how to make their portfolio what goes into making them how are the testing done because a student if he has to aspire to be a designer to look at this great industry which is which is nearly now global in nature they need to know all aspects so that's what we have dedicated outreach teams right. on, in the area of it yeah so in that case i would like to know that how does the curriculum of uh, karnavati university ensure the best practices of the industry they say the proof of the eating proof of the pudding is in eating yeah so i'll give you a few uh, statistical data how a system moves you know uh, it is told today that design is intelligence made visible so these are some of the things which are taught about design so design has due processes due systems we have tim brown of ideo talking about the great area which is moving called design thinking which is now immersed also into programs by engineering colleges by business schools even iims have a whole uh, curriculum on design and it defines what is so essential in design mm-hmm. so while we have due processes systems philosophies hypotheses a way in which design education happens which i will talk a little bit later but i will tell you how does quality standards get infused into making of curriculum so in any university you have a board of studies which consists of internal members and members from outside academia who are experts who are renowned who are known in that particular sector we deal with nearly nine disciplines within design starting from product design uh, industrial design interior and furniture design fashion design textile design and lifestyle accessories where you have jewelry where you have ceramics you have leather and now the new areas which are coming is visual and animation which is in the area of ar vr mixed reality and our new school is also looking at computational intelligence that is courses in artificial intelligence machine learning robotics automation big data blockchain and there is a great connect between design and technology and therefore we have taken that in this line months we have updated our infrastructure nearly 5x to 6x by getting promptly branded players felder which is a company of austria has set up a whole new wood workshop uh the salt we are working for a whole new 3d printing we are working with mitsubishi for a whole robotics and similarly with a big company especially i think hp and others for setting up a ar vr holographic lab so while you have the structure you have a system how curriculum is made which is so important so you have curriculum mapping teams and you have industry teams they meet nearly a year behind and gradually form what is going to be the learning outcomes and the infrastructure requirement and the faculty requirement for in principle after taking in principle approval and making it future proof and forward looking it then is sent to the university board of studies who do a understanding of that it goes to the governing council 
and nearly six months or eight months before a curriculum is launched. So in curriculum, what the three main factors is you select great faculty teams to be the curriculum making teams. You have industry academia connect to know the way industry is moving so that nothing is redundant, everything is future forward. Then there are processes within the university. It looks at how curriculum are made. A year end and the UGC allows that within the three year you can do 30% changes because there's, it's a very dynamic industry, especially design where there's so much multidisciplinary and transdisciplinary areas. So therefore, there's a whole new system in which curriculum are made. It is made with others also. But when I said the proof of the pudding is in eating, we have developed a global design program. Three top universities of the world have got to it. It is dealt with level four, level five, and level six. These are internationally benchmarked levels of the UK QAA. So when the team from UK, team from Australia, team from India, and team from Italy sit down, so there can be nothing short of being globally benchmarked because a designer is so much global in today. And therefore, it shows that we have reached a status that our curriculum writing, curriculum mapping, uh, researching that area is benchmarked to the best. Right, sir. That was uh, quite very thoroughly explained and uh, very well said. Thank you so much for the lovely response. Moving on, I would like to ask that in your personal opinion, what should be the university's top priority over the next 10 years? So, uh, universities, see, education is a very dynamic process and universities have to move with the time. Just the other day, we have been called by the government of Gujarat to look at the curriculum of toy design. And we have the necessary pen strength and the infrastructure. Because that's an, another big area of Atmanirbhar Bharat. Why should we depend on other mythologies where there's so much ingrained into our systems and processes to make a very good story around toys, whether it is digital, whether it is actually through a prototyping process through some of the sustainable area. So one is that we have always stood by being at the forefront and therefore when we have the international conferences, it gives us the way industry is moving, the way design is moving, the way education is moving. So one of the topmost priorities is to constantly upgrade our infrastructure, get the best national and international faculty in campus so that the student, the learning, the student and design education being so much hands-on so much tactile, so much, so many more, so much more into the student faculty ratio, which is one is to eight or maximum one is to 10, as compared to one is to 20 or one is to 13 other, other area. From traditional to modern to areas which are sustained. So these are some of the things we look at. Good lab facilities, good studio facilities. This year, we have been able to develop three or four great infrastructure and gradually move forward because that's the only way. Because practical, if you see our semester, there are only two or one theory subjects. They're just all practical. And through a design process in which where every aspect of your learning is you meet it in the lab, you work on it, you work to options. And the biggest thing which we do is that how we use new systems, processes and technology. Like we have one of the topmost online blended systems called the LMS Blackboard. And it is not only LMS Blackboard, it's LMS Blackboard Collaborate and LMS Blackboard Learn Ultra, where faculty can put their classes into the cloud and students through a flipped classroom process have can consume it at their time, at their will. And then we know how the new centennial and the millennial works in this new area and how the centennials are going to do it in future. But also when we bring in technology, there's a training component test. When you bring any plant machinery, there's a three-month, four-month training, which is already part whenever we do it. So 
sensitizing to the future responsible design uh, uh social inclusion social entrepreneurship uh bringing in startup and incubation and innovation systems uh, and building great infrastructure and ultimately trying to get improve the quality of faculty these are some of our what are the plans for the next 10 years to really be known as a top most design school in right uh, wishing karnavati university and uh, the united world of uh, institute of design all the very best for the future endeavors uh without taking much of your time so i would like to directly skip to the last part of the last part of the interview and uh, request you to give a few suggestions or advices to the current youth and the aspiring students as well see um design per se is very very experiential it hands on and it can only move forward when there's a strong bond between a student and the teacher to the teacher is not only a friend philosopher and guide but also a mentor coach and has a new way of constantly motivating and unlocking the minds of student and therefore a strong partnership needs to be developed and in doing that you have to have certain system so one is you have a student council which can bring out what aspects student is we also take the student through how to develop their portfolio how to be industry ready in all parts we have systems by which we give them how to improve their statement of purpose if they have to go and bid for their masters abroad with with our partners with whom we have collaborative arrangements great scholarships for meritorious students uh we also have a system that they are they are available explored to a number of international joint projects where they where they can be at par with another group which is in any other country with different cultures so the indian perspective and cultures and uh, international perspective get together to bid for certain amount of prizes poster competitions but also great projects which are showcased to give you an illustration of fashion design along with a uh, top institute of italy presented made something over 3 months which was presented in the milan similarly the students have to be ready to consume as much as can be brought through both in the classroom and outside so there's a great in design education most education lot of it happens outside the so for me to tell the students be aware be curious be all note the changes in technology and never fear to question anything or reach out because as faculty we believe that unless you are open to such open to criticism open to understanding the many areas where a technologically savvy student have been able to find new ways in the classroom and we are i think one of the luckiest institutions that we get a very good standard of students who come through a three filter about 8000 students appear for exam about 1500 selected ultimately 420 come and join us through the next level of filtration uh, where they are benchmark so a student a awareness be technological savvy be open to all new areas and never fear to experiment and explore so these are some of the mantras which i think a student will take home and uh, uh, any institution is only known by their student so when i say anything i write to the graduating student here are my students which are one time student and lifetime ambassadors of right sir thank you thank you so much for the motivational response those were indeed some words of wisdom might say uh, on this note so i'd like to conclude the interview thank you so much uh, for your time and uh, it was thank you him uh, it was wonderful talking to you so early in the morning uh, yeah, we could look at some of the areas i hope we get future uh, again we can meet and talk more and now that we are towards the end of 
the pandemic or towards the last few last straws of time maybe in 2 3 months i would invite you and come and see as they say seeing is believing to see what tanavati and how uid has developed into a great event thank Absolutely. you very thank you so that was colonel surajit bos director of uh, admissions and international collaborations of united world institute of design at karnataka university thank you sir thank you